Welcome back, everybody, to the Full Gospel of Christ YouTube channel. I'm Brian Fight, pastor of Full Gospel of Christ. I have a message for you this week that I'm sure will be a blessing. One of the things I get to do as a pastor is I get to listen to all the other pastors preaching. And that's one of my favorite things to do is to find out the mainstream flow of uh, what's being preached in the church. And right now, because of Israel and everything that's happening over there in the Middle East, everyone's interested in the end times. So I thought, well, I'd like to teach the greatest end time message that anyone could ever hear ever. And if that's not bold enough for you, well, then maybe I, I'll try harder for you next time. But this is going to be the greatest end time message anyone's ever heard ever. And so maybe you uh, will understand what I mean by the time I get finished. Um, how important it is to hear this message for the end times. So the... Um, the end time, uh, I'll just give it to you in the beginning, is not as much as talking about the prophecy of the, like Ezekiel 38 that gives the nations that surround Israel for the battle of Armageddon. I actually mean the end of time whenever you meet the Lord Jesus and you are being judged. That's the end of time. You have life. Your life consists of time. And then once your time is up, your time is over, and then you must answer for every bit of time that you've ever lived. All the time you've lived, you must answer for that time and what you've done for it. So today I'd like to talk about the end time or the end of time in your life, in my life, in the church's life, and what happens at the end of time. It's really important that we understand what happens at the end of time so we can be prepared for that right now. There's a special place in heaven that has, um, is designed for the end time, and that means the end of time. There is a place that has all the books of time. What I mean by that is God has a library or a place where he has many, many books, and in these books are written every single thing that ever happened in time. Your life was recorded, everything that ever happened to you in your life was recorded. Um, and from the day you were born, even before you were born, until the very day that you die. And so this place I'd like to talk to you about, it's a very special place. It's a place that's kept by angels and maybe an army of angels that keep the record books and keep them up to date. This place is um, found right here in Revelation Five, I mean, excuse me, Revelation 15, 5. And it says, And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. So there's a place in heaven where the books are kept. And in this context, uh, this is where all the judgments on, in the tribulation are coming out of this room. Uh, the vials and the trumpets and everything that's coming onto the earth is coming out of the place where the books are kept. I think that's pretty interesting that God, as he keeps record of time and all the records of everything that happened during time, that that is the place where actual judgment comes forth from onto the earth. And so in, in this building is a building that you and I will also go to give an answer or an account for our lives. And we will answer for things that are written in the books. That's a scary thing to think about. However, if you're a Christian or a believer, your judgment will not be one of condemnation. You won't have a condemnation judgment to determine if you are condemned or not. Your judgment will be different from a sinner's judgment. So let's talk a little bit about that, about the end of time message. Um, a very important scripture, Hebrews 9, 27 says, And it is appointed unto men once to die. Every single person has this same expectation on their life when they're born, is that you are appointed unto death. Everyone is appointed unto death. And then it says, after this, the judgment. So um, even if we're going into the rapture, we are still going to the judgment. Every single person who ever lived in time 
Your life consists of time, what you did during time, all the decisions uh, that you made, uh, the culmination of all your decisions that you made during time were written in a book. And one day you'll stand and give an account to God for these things. Now let's look at Revelation 20, 12. Now this is not our judgment. This is somebody else who's going to stand and be judged out of the books. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, books plural, not just one. The books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, you don't want to be at this judgment, but there, I just want you to see that they're going to also be judged according to the books. God has a place in heaven that houses or contains all the books. And one day we also are going to stand with the books opened that, are, that were written about our life. And we also will give an account for the things that we've done. So um, I want to go back to uh, Revelation 15, 5 and just read one more time the description of this place. It's not a description. It's just the mention of this place. And after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. Now that's interesting. That word testimony here is the is the word that comes from. Um, uh, I don't know if I can mar, marturion. Uh, it's it's where evidence is given. It's whenever you go to a court of law and you have to give your um, your testimony to a judge or your an account or, or your witness or your statement to a judge. That's where we are going to go give our uh, account to Jesus who's on the Bema seat. So let's go to that scripture if we can. We, we're not at the great white throne judgment, but we are at this judgment. Second Corinthians 5, 8 says we are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body and is to be present with the Lord. That's a beautiful thing. It says, but whether it says, wherefore we labor, wherefore we labor that whether present in our body or absent, we may be accepted of him. Now, there's still a laboring for a Christian that even though you've been saved and even though you've been accepted into heaven because it's a free gift and it's the blood of Jesus that's the only reward that you uh, have to offer as a way into heaven, the Bible says that your life can still come up before the Lord to be acceptable or not accepted. You can have your Christian life not be accepted by the Lord at the end of your life, at the end of time. And so this is a very important concept for Christians to understand, though, is even though you made it into heaven, you need to make sure that your life is pleasing and acceptable unto him. Verse 10 says, for we must all appear before the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. Now, Jesus is not there determining whether or not we're going to go to heaven or not, but he is going to judge according to how we ran our race. How did we live our Christian life? That is going to be judged. And this judgment that we're going to have is going to come from the same place where the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony comes from, where all the books are. We're going to give an account for ourselves to Jesus, who is on the Bema seat. And it says that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Now think about that. A Christian is not judged whether they go to heaven or not on the things they did in their body. No, this is a separate issue. You go to heaven because the blood of Jesus is a free gift and you have received it from the Lord. However, those people who are saved and have received the free gift they will then be judged according to how they lived their Christian life in their bodies. And it says, for we all must stand, we all must appear before the Bema seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it is good or bad. You will answer to the Lord. Now, this is the most important end time message you'll ever hear in your life. 
And that's why I'm saying that. It's hugely important that we understand that our life is not just uh, covered in some kind of grace where nothing else matters, that we just go into heaven and we're never having another conversation about how we lived. The Bible is very clear that we'll all stand before a Bema seat. That's a seat that they judge the Olympic runners by making sure that they ran the race according to all the rules and they, and they didn't cut any corners or break any rules because we have to receive, the Bible says we must receive the things done in our body, whether we did good or whether we did bad. Uh, verse 11 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Well, I don't want to move on to that. Listen, so verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it is good or bad. I just want to say that one more time. This is the most important end time message you'll ever hear, because at the end of our life, we don't just get to go into heaven and play on the harps and la 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 um, forever and ever. That's not what happens. We actually have a conversation with God about how we lived our life. So the greatest end time message you'll ever hear is you better be prepared for the day whenever the books are opened and you have to give an account for your life. So if the labor here... Um, this end time message, this laboring to be accepted of the Lord, to be accepted of the Lord. There's going to be Christians who their life is not accepting or, or the Lord does not accept their life the way they live. But we can now make, a, make a, um, an effort, a conscious effort to begin to live correctly for the Lord. And when we, when we see Jesus and the books are open, then we can give an account and we can receive for the things that we've done good and we can be accepted by the Lord. Now that's just a very important um, concept in, in the Word of God. And, and uh, so I, I guess I put these scriptures in there. I'd like you to read this one with me about the books that are open. It says, Thine eyes, verse 16, did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Now, we don't understand how these books are going to be uh, used to judge us. We don't know... Um, what it means by God wrote down the days before you were born and the different things and how it would be judged according to that. That's that's not what I'm here to try to explain because the Bible's not clear about that. I just wanted you to see here. Here's an example of one of the books that were written about your life before you were even born. They, they, your days were written in there. Maybe the expectations of your life was in there. Maybe the things that God... Um, uh, knew about you were written in in the book bef before you were even it says before there were any of them um, I just want to give you one more example of one of these books that might be uh, there on judgment day uh, verse verse 8 thou tellest my wanderings put thou put thou my did you uh, it says you put my tears into your bottle are they not in thy book so even the tears that you have are in a book and so I just want to, I'm not even here to just um, make any kind of doctrine out of these books. I just want you to know that as a Christian, as believers, when we go to stand before the Lord in the Bema seat, that we will be in this temple of the tabernacle of the testimony where we will give a testimony to the Lord and account for our life and books will be opened. And these are just I just wanted to grab a couple of. Uh, references to books that were open and I don't know how these books would be used and I'm not trying to get you to believe in that these books are going to be used against you or, or to hurt you because the Bible doesn't explain that but I'd like to talk to you maybe real quickly about the two or maybe a couple things that you can understand of how you can prepare your life and what maybe the judgment will look like in the different ways. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you about, um, about what judgment could look like is that God 
is a person who is a rewarder. I, I, I noticed that there are a lot of believing Christians, a lot of believing pastors who don't believe in rewards. They don't think that there will be a judgment day for Christians. And, and I just beg to differ. I don't know why you would say that, especially looking at this scripture in 11.6 here in Hebrews, but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, God, at the end of our life, this is how important this message is. God is a rewarder of those whose lives are going to be accepted by him. Now, there are some people's lives that are not going to be accepted by the Lord and there won't be any rewards for them and there won't be any acknowledgement from God of, of, about uh, success. But then there will be other people who made it their life to live in such a way that God is a rewarder of those who diligently lived after him and sought him. And so this is a very important concept that I believe that's missing in the church today. And that is that, that God himself is a rewarder of those who live for him. God is a rewarder of those who live for him. And there's going to be a day when we all, when all the church comes together and there we're going to be judged and we're going to give an account for our lives. And then that account, um, is going to be rewarded or it's not going to be rewarded. And this is the most in, in, most important end time message you're ever going to hear. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. This is, a, this is some scripture we can understand about the end times. Um, the books being opened and what we read earlier, just a couple handful of the books, that doesn't help us any to prepare, but this helps us. This will help you to prepare right here. Um, it says, according, this is Paul talking, according to the grace of God, which was given unto him, he says, me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. So he's talking about, Paul's talking about the gospel that was given him. He's laid that foundation and that every man and woman, uh, when we go to have our conversation with the Lord at the end, that we need to take heed. We need to uh, be careful. Let me see if I can. Uh, it says, behold, beware, look on, perceive. You need to care about how you're building your life on the foundation of Paul's gospel. For other foundation can no man lay other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, and precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. See, that's gonna be the difference in the day of judgment. When we all go stand in the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, and we give an account for our life, the, the um, it says here that the foundation is either going to hold what you built your life on is either holding precious stones, gold and silver, or somebody whose life is not accepted is going to be the wood, the hay and the stubble. It says every man's work shall be made manifest. Every man's work, every man's work, your life, the, the work you say, oh, well, we're not saved by works. Grace versus works. Well, that's not right. That's not the that's not what we're talking about. There, there's going to be a book open called the Lamb's Book of Life. OK, if you're in there, you automatically go to heaven. OK, so then the judgment moves on to how did you build your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ and every man's work. The, the work of your life that you were living for the Lord is going to be manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now this is the most important end time message you'll ever hear because some of the things you have going in your life that you think are the most important right now, they're not the most important things. The most important thing is that you are building up your life. You're doing the work of living your life in an acceptable manner to God. So when you get there on, on your judgment day and you're standing in that temple of the tabernacle of the testimony where all the books are and the books of according to your life are open opened up, 
that your work is going to be manifest. Your life is going to be manifest. And it's either hay, wood, and stubble, or it's precious stones of gold and silver. And the day is going to manifest it. There will be a fire there. And if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Think about that now. That's a Christian going into heaven. And it says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. That's a, hard, that's a hard concept to believe because we know that sinners are not going into heaven and they're still being judged for the things they did in their body. But Christians are going into heaven, but they're still being judged on what kind of work their life that was built on the foundation of Jesus. How did you live your Christian life? How did you go out and live day to day all the days of your life for the Lord Jesus Christ, because that will be judged one day. And so it says, if any man's work shall remain, then there will be a reward. And if any man's work shall not, he shall suffer loss. But watch this. He himself shall be saved, even so by fire. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a very weird way to go into heaven is if you are one of those people who made it into heaven and the Lamb's book of life is open and you made it into that book. But then he goes and he looks in the other books and he finds out that you lived your life just any way you wanted to. You lived by the slippery credit card of grace from the Baptist doctrine. Of, you know, I like to pick on them with that. And so um, maybe you just lived any way you, you didn't think you didn't prepare for that day at all. And then your conversation with the Lord is your life was not acceptable to me. That is going to be a very interesting thing. The Bible says he'll suffer loss and then he'll just his everything that he did, all of his work for the Lord that really wasn't work will just burn up all in his face and he'll still get to go into heaven with nothing. Verse somebody who lived their life, um, who l built up their life um, on the foundation of Jesus Christ and their life is accepted to God. And then God is going to reward that person and then they get to go into heaven with a reward. So there'll be people that go into heaven with a reward and some people that go into heaven with no reward. Now, I grabbed a place that maybe looked like these books. Like what if this place here um, full of books? What if this is what that place looks like or, or, or something like this? Look, look at all these books. Now, of course, this doesn't look like heaven. I just grabbed some um, pictures off the Internet that had a bunch of books. But imagine whenever the, the church is raptured, right? Because the, the rapture is going to take the church to judgment. That's right. That's what the rapture is for. The rapture is to take the glorious church, to take God's people to judgment. We're not going to escape. There's nowhere to escape to. This is what the um, ju um, this is what the rapture's purpose is: is to take the glorious church off the earth because darkness has to cover the earth completely, and it can't do it while we're here. So where do we go? Yes, we go to heaven and we do a marriage supper of the Lamb, but we also go to judgment. And when we get to judgment, we'll be in a place in the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony where the books are. And the books are going to talk about everything in our life. And then our work will be manifested out in front of God himself and will be accepted or not. This is a very interesting concept to live your life by is preparing for this day when these books are open. And I keep pointing at these books. Now, these are not the books. These, these are just a reference for us to get an idea of what it might look like whenever there's a place in heaven where the books are, are being kept. And we're going to go sit at the Bema seat in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be judged by the things that are according, according to the things that are in the book. That's just a very uh, different concept than some people imagine what heaven's going to be like when we first get there. So if you could give me your salvation date, then you should be um, a certain, uh, you know, when you go to the doctor and, and they know your, your uh, age and stuff, they have a growth chart on there about how, you know, you should be up to this point and weigh this much and be this tall and be this healthy. And so I just want you to know that God, you know, he expects things from his 
people, their lives being built on Jesus should show forth. Now, there's people that's been uh, saved for 20, 30, 40 years and they got nothing to show for. It. Um, so I just want you to know that God, at the end of our life, he's going to look at your life and it's either going to be acceptable to him or it's not. And you're either going to receive a reward or you're not. So let me just talk uh, real quick about a reward. I got uh, one scripture I just want to, well, it's not one scripture, but it's this place in scripture in Luke 19 where Jesus goes and he gives the 10 pounds um, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. And so, but it's, uh, and then you come on down here and what did they do? Um, you know, they were supposed to take those pounds and then go out into the world and then make something with those pounds. And then in verse 16, the Lord comes and he says to him, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound, I have gained 10 pounds. So Jesus says, I'm going to go off into a far land, but I call my servants and I'm giving you these things and I'm going to come back and see what you did with them. Now, we all have talents that the Lord's given us. We've all have abilities. We've all got calls on our life. We all have assignments of things we should be doing. And when the Lord comes back, he wants to know what did we do with, the, with these things? How much did we gain with these things? And so this first one said that he took his pound and made 10 pounds. And he said to him, well, well done, uh, thy servant. Let me just read it like it says, Well, thy good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Wow, that's amazing. This is the, what the rewards are going to look like. This, this, uh, this doesn't even seem fair. Um, God gives you a little measure of a thing, and then he tells you to occupy till he comes back. And so you're out there living your life for the Lord, and you're using the thing that God gave you to make uh, something out of it for the Lord. And when he comes back, he looks at the thing that he gave you and then rewards you with something that's not even on the same scale. He gives you 10 cities, 10 cities, 10 cities. Somebody's going to help him rule and reign. The Bible says that um, we're, we're going to help him rule and reign like priests and kings over the, over the, uh, during the kingdom age. Over the, over the nations that'll be here. There'll be peoples that'll be here. There'll be cities everywhere. And so God says here that some of these rewards that we'll be looking for will be how we help him in the kingdom age. So I just wanted you to, now you could keep reading on down and then he asked the next one. In fact, we'll just look at the second one. And the second one came saying, Lord, thy pound, I've gained five pounds. And he said, likewise, be thou also over five cities. But that's, that's just amazing. Like he just, he, he was given a pound. And so while the Lord was gone and uh, he used the pound and he occupied till he came and he made something out of that. And the Lord rewarded him based on his life that he lived. But uh, uh, the other came and behold and said, Lord, I kept thy pound in a napkin because I was, you know, fearful for I feared thee because you are an austere man and take us up where you don't lay down and you reap that that you don't sow. And he said unto him out of your own mouth, will I judge you, you wicked servant? Um, you knew that I was an austere man taking up all these things like you just said. Wherefore gave, why didn't you give my money to the bank? And then I could have had some at my, um, you know, some interest. And he said unto them that stood by, take, wow, take from him the pound and give it to him that hath 10 pounds. I don't want to be that guy. Let's not be that guy. And so that guy really needed the most important end time message that anyone's ever heard. And this important end time message would be, you need to get ready. The Lord has given you a pound uh, in the scripture. Um, this just refers to money, basically. But but God has given you something in your life that's worth something and you used to be occupying till he comes back. And then when he comes back or when we go to judgment, God is going to test and see what did we do with the stuff. And if you didn't do anything with it, God is not going to be pleased with you. 
Now, you just think you get to go into heaven. God's just loving you because you just, uh, you know, you love Jesus and everything's going to be fine. But that, that's not how it's going to be. God's going to look at your life. He's going to uh, test it by fire. And if you didn't live for the Lord correctly, then everything you did in your life was meaningless. And God will take away from you and give it to somebody else. This is the most important end time message you're ever going to hear in your entire life is that we got to be ready at the end of time. We got to be ready for judgment. We got to be ready for the books to be open. We can't be scared of judgment day. We got to be excited about judgment day. Can you imagine the guy who made 10 pounds just standing there just waiting to be called on, just waiting to, for his name to be called on so he could tell the Lord exactly what he did with his stuff? And then the one guy who didn't do anything, I bet he was hiding in the corner hoping his name never got called. Well, see, what I'm telling you is if you'll let the word of God today um, refocus you on what's important and some of these things in your life that you think are important right now, they're not important. What's important right now is that we're living our life for the Lord and that he has given us things of value to, to live for him and to go out and use these things and to try to uh, not try, but do make something out of them, make more out of it than what he gave you. And then when we meet the Lord and the books are open and we're standing there giving an account of our life, then it, we will have a reward for us. This is an important concept. And I know everyone's talking about the Israel in the end time right now. And and that's their mindset is on the end time. And then it's basically just an escape. Oh, well, you know, we're going to get out of here. We're going to get out of here. But think about where we're going. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? It's almost at the end. Look at the end times. It's all over the news now. Where are we going to go? We're going to go to judgment. We're going to go to judgment and we got to be ready for judgment. Let me tell you, brother and sister, today you can be ready for judgment. Oh, my yes, you can get ready right now for judgment. You could just start you changing your life up right now. You could you could you, if, if you're one of those people who buried the pound and, and, and God uh, is not going to like that. And uh, you, you can pull it back out right now. But we still got time and you can start putting it and occupying until he comes and you can make something out your life right now today we got enough time right now until the rapture or right now before you die we got enough you have enough time I have enough time right now that we can please the Lord with our life even if we squandered our whole life up to this point this one word right here this one message from the Lord Jesus can cause you to change everything that you're doing and everything that you've uh, not been able to accomplish so far and you can totally flip that around and totally have enough on judgment day to please the Lord and to have 10 cities, 20 cities, 30 cities. If you will just hear the word of the Lord today and let me read this scripture to you. Here's how you're going to get there. Here's your best way to get there. It's going to be in Matthew. Watch this 619. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth. Oh, that's the big problem that we're all in, man. We're just, this is what we've been trained to do. This is the American dream. But don't do it. Listen here, if you want to turn it around and make it right, lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth anymore, man. Forget this place. It says where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. There it is, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also Woo! this is it right here all we have to do is just change is repentance it's always repentance we change the way that we're thinking about our life change the way that we're thinking about ourselves, and change the way that we're thinking about um how we're occupying until he comes so it's not just grin and bear it and hold on until he gets here and then we escape to the by and by pie in the sky. No, listen, what we want to do is you want to start preparing right now. You just want to take what God's given you and you just start you just start putting it into the system and you start growing it. You start making the investment and getting it bigger. And when the Lord comes back, you won't ever you won't put your head down. You'll be excited for the Lord to know what you did with your with your reward. You'll be excited when you're in a place where all the books are open and Let's say all these, let's say every single one of these books right here was written about something you did. You'd be excited about that. You'd be happy to know, to, to know that you lived your life worthy of the Lord. 
But think about it. there's going to be so many believers and so many Christians who are not ready for this day. And oh, they love the end times and they couldn't wait to figure out every little nation and what little sign of his coming and all that stuff. But as soon as they were taken out of here, you got taken to the judgment where you weren't ready. That's why I'm calling this the greatest end time message you've ever heard in your entire life. And it's not because you get to know the prophecies or the Ezekiel 38 nations that are going to surround Israel for the war of Armageddon. I'm talking about because it's preparing you for the very moment that you when you meet Jesus and you get your head up and because you you lived for this moment. This is an exciting message. This ought to this ought to stimulate you and get you going and, 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 and to start laying up treasures in heaven and, and start changing uh, where your treasure is. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So the last thing I want to say is, um, you know, our life is a vapor. And, and, and we, we've heard that a lot. It's in the Bible. But I just want you to know this vapor that we have is 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 an atomic bomb vapor. It leaves permanent ripples in eternity. What, how you live your life, this little vapor that we have that does belong to us can, can cause for us an eternal weight in glory. I mean, it just, it, this little vapor that we have can be used in such a way that we please the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't just have to say, well, we just live in a little vapor and so we just do the best we can till we get by. No, this vapor that we have, this, this, this small, short span of time can be lived for the Lord Jesus Christ and we can please him and our life can be acceptable. And when we stand before the Bema seat, we'll just get, uh, you know, you know, the kid who wins the, um, the spelling bee trophy. He, he's not uh, he's not doing it for the trophy. You know, he, he, he he's doing it because what the trophy represents. Um, Imagine going into heaven and, and, and you, get to, you get to have a trophy of, um, of how much you love the Lord. The little boy holding the trophy, doesn't, it's not about the trophy, it's what the trophy represents. Woo, boy, I feel the Lord so heavy. Woo, by hell, my heels. Woo, just give me a second. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Woo, man. Wow, heavy, boys. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Whew. Imagine we get to live for the Lord in such a way that's rewarded. And that reward is this trophy, this, this reward where we get to walk around heaven and show people how much we love the Lord. And what this trophy would represent, what we can represent. Woo, boy, I feel the Lord so heavy. I don't know why. I'm not... It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's it's um, it's living as though the Lord's worthy of our life to be lived. And who cares about a trophy? It's what the trophy represents. Boy, every time I say it, wow, woo, baba yo, taba husha, woo, woo, we, whoa, boy, whoa, whoa. I'm telling you, whoa, hallelujah, hallelujah, woo, hallelujah, whoa. Whoa, 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 wow, wow. I hadn't felt like that in a long time. Wow, wow, wow. It's not what the trophy, it's not the trophy, it's what the trophy represents. Woo, 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 hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo, woo. Wow, wow, I wasn't expecting that, boy. I wasn't ready for that, man. I wasn't ready for this. Wow, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful. The Holy Spirit is just showing us how beautiful that, that day will be for some people. And then there's other people that are going to suffer loss, and they're not going to be ready. And they might have known every scripture for the end time, and they could have quoted it front and back, but they weren't ready. And they got nothing to show for their life. Because it's not going to count, you know, in all the end time scriptures. That don't count. That don't count towards anything. You don't get no special reward for that. Woo, boy, hallelujah. My goodness, daddy. Woo. Man, that just makes me want to do that. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. 
Man. Whoo, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray for every person out there that you just catch what I just said, that the Holy Ghost just confirmed it to you, that it's not about the trophy. Man, whoa, I just say it again. It comes back to me. It's not about the trophy. It's what the trophy represents. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Woo. Oh, boy, it's a fun one here. Yay. Yay, 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 yay. Let's do that, man. Let's do that. Let's let's let the church today, let's let, grab our bootstraps back up. Come on, let's stop playing around. We ain't got much time left, but we can do something that's worth something. Ooh, it's not about, <laughs> I'm doing it again. It's not about the trophy. It's about what the trophy represents. Woo, woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. My goodness, hallelujah. Woo, my goodness. All right, let me end it with this. Let me end it with this. Thank you, Dad. Woo, wow, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo. So what is the work? What's the work that we do? What is the work that we do to earn our trophies, to earn our rewards? What is the work that we do? How do we put our treasures in heaven? Here's the work. The Bible gives us one thing that's called the work. Here's the work. The work of the believer is to believe. The work of the believer is to believe daily, always believe in the Lord Jesus through every situation, everything that you do. Don't live your life connected to this world. You just believe in Jesus. You believe in um, in him daily. You overcoming things. You overcome this thing and that thing. You don't believe in, uh, you know. You know, that's where the devil loses all of his battles is whenever we fight in the ring of faith. But Christians today, they fight in a ring where the devil makes you go fight in the ring of sight. You, 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 you out there, you out there living for the Lord based on what you see, taste and smell. And the devil beat you every time. He's going to beat you every time. That's where he's the boss. He's in the ring of sight. And so if you're just fighting things by how according to how you see, you're never going to win. So you don't fight the devil in that ring. You 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 get in the ring of faith. You fight by faith. It don't matter what you see. It don't matter what you experience. You just sit there and you fight the devil by by in the ring of faith. He can't never win in that ring. He can't never win. There. And that's where your work is. The work of a believer is to believe. And that's how you earn your way um, into the reward system of life, is you believe, you believe, you. it's hard to believe, but you believe, that's what you do, that's the work of a believer, and don't you fight the devil in the ring of, fight, of, of senses and sight. You, 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 you'll be fighting a thing that looks like it's not changing. You, you'll fight a thing that looks like it's getting worse. You, you'll fight cancer that looks like it's getting bigger. But you don't fight that way. You get out of that ring. That's the devil got you in that ring. You get over in the ring of faith and you fight by faith. And I don't care what I see. I don't care what I taste or smell. Woo, hallelujah, I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. You fight in the ring of faith. You fight there. And that's, that's, that's what translates right there. That's the work that you do as a believer. That's the work. You just keep believing and keep believing and keep believing and keep believing. All the way to the end. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, it's not about the trophy. <laughs> it's not about the trophy. It's about what it represents. And it represents how you were a fighter and a believer and a believer and a fighter all the way to the end. You didn't care that the cancer looked ugly all the way until the very end because that doesn't matter to you because you fight in the ring of faith. It doesn't matter. I don't have any finances. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I just keep believing and keep believing until my faith becomes sight. Woo, woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for visiting me in my sermon in here by myself. <laughs> Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost so heavy in here. I, I ain't leaving out of this room. When I turn the camera off, I'm going to get up and shout around the room. Woo! Woo! Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. I pray for you right now under this anointing. Every yoke in your life be broken. Everything that's holding you back in the name of Jesus Christ. May you just be filled up with the Holy Ghost and everything that's in your way. Move out of the way because you're a fighter. You're going to believe your way right on through. 
And everywhere you've got your treasure on this earth, you're going to change it over and put your treasure into heaven. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm about to get up and run around and shout. Man, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, wee. <sighs> Whew. Man. Now let me end with this. I want to read you the worst part of heaven. If you don't mind, I'd like to share with you the worst part of heaven. The worst part of heaven is when you realize your love of money was evil. And it penalized you for eternity. When you realize that your love of money was evil and that penalizes you for all of eternity. When you realize, watch this, this is, what, this is the worst part of heaven, is when you realize exactly what life was actually about, but it was too late. When you realize what life was supposed to actually be about and how far off you were from that, that's going to be the worst part of heaven. The worst part of heaven is when uh, you see the error of your habits, your thoughts, your actions, and people that you didn't save. That's going to be the worst part of heaven. The worst part of heaven is when you see your relationship with Jesus was not taken seriously on the earth. That's going to be the worst part of heaven. The worst part of heaven is when you see how much God did for you that you didn't get. The worst part of heaven is when you realize how much peace and safety and comfort and healing there was for you down here and you didn't get none of it and you didn't believe it. When you realize the finality of your earthly obedience, that's going to be the worst part of heaven. The worst part of heaven is when, uh, worst part of heaven is when you chose your own life and your own plan over God's perfect plan and his perfect will for you. When you realize how much sickness and, and pain that you went through that was meaningless, that's going to be the worst part of heaven. All the peace and the love and the joy and the rest that belong to you down here that you didn't believe in, that's going to be the worst part of heaven. When you realize that you didn't cleanse yourself from all worry, all fear, all anger, all depression, all love of money, all greed, all selfishness. When you just when you when you just uh, let all that go to live how you wanted to live, that's going to be the worst part of heaven for some people, but not for us. Not for me and you. I know I'm not talking to you and me. We're not going to be like that. We're not going to have that worst part of heaven to us. But think about it. There's going to be some people that's the worst part of heaven when they get there and realize how far off they were. The worst part of heaven. When you realize what kind of steward in life that you actually were when compared to the steward you could have been if you just believed the Lord. When you realize how much you didn't believe, whoo, that's going to be the worst part of heaven when you get there and realize how much you didn't believe, how much you actually didn't believe. Oh, you might think you're a believer, but when you get to heaven and realize how much you actually didn't believe, that's going to be the worst part of heaven for you. When you realize you didn't die to yourself and take up your cross like you could have. See, that's what I mean, no regrets. We're supposed to live for the Lord. We live for the Lord with no regrets, taking up our cross, dying to ourselves, believing Him all the way to the end in everything that He has. And that way, there won't be the worst part of heaven for you. Well, I'm going to leave it there for you. I just want you to hear that the Lord Jesus, boy, He visited this sermon to let us know. That we need to be living our life ready for the end times. We have to be, we're in the end times. We're in the final hours of life. And how we get there, we get excited about life. And we start living in such a way that we're going to please the Lord when he sees us. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Here, take this reward into heaven with you. And there'll be some people that won't get that said to them. It'll be the worst part of heaven for them. It'll be the worst part when they realize all the things that they could have did and could have had and could have believed, but they didn't. 
They lived down here with their heart down here and their treasures down here and everything down here was the most important thing to them. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word that you've given us and the excitement that we have about our future and how much you want to bless us and how we can live for you and how there's no way that we can fail if we just believe. And that the work in our life is to believe you and we just choose to believe you and choose to put our treasures in heaven and our hearts follow that. Lord Jesus, we love you and we're going to live our life so that when we meet you, we don't have to put our head down, but we get to be excited, 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 excited about our conversation with you. Okay, this is Brian Fike signing off this week, Full Gospel of Christ YouTube channel. You start living for the Lord. Woohoo! Yay! Hallelujah. See you next week. Have a good week.